Yeah, that kid is having dynamic supination. That's a video for dynamic supination. And when you check clinically, you stroke the undersurface, that's supination. Can you see that? That's dynamic supination. Whereas in a normal child, it should go out into eversion. In a dynamic supination, it goes into inversion. There. See the difference? So one is dynamic supination, other is normal. Okay? Uh, the batch was with me. I showed them a case of complex clubfoot because there was one child with complex clubfoot. So once you start treating children with clubfoot, you start getting these children with what is described as a very resistant clubfoot, where the cast falls off after the third or the fourth cast. I need a rubber model eh, with the deformed foot. Cast slips off after the third or fourth cast and allows the cast to slip out, leading on to a more severe deformity. And the foot looks like this, where the tibia looks bored. There is edema. There is edema on the foot. And there is second toe look, the, the, the second toe looks longer than the great toe. Can you see that? And the great toe is short and cocked up. It is a short cocked up great toe and there is a crease running across the lateral side of the foot also. And when you look at the side of the foot, the cavus is worse, the whole foot is shorter than the other side. Okay? And there is a, what is known as a plantaris crease. A crease running across the sole of the foot is a plantaris crease. And that's the bowing of the tibia which is apparent. Now, one has to understand, earlier people didn't know why this was happening. And the term atypical came up from an expression used by a group of orthopedic surgeons at a dinner meet where they shared their experience with a group of children that presented like this. And one of them said, there is something atypical about it. And that's how the expression came about. Something atypical about it. So they used to be called atypical. But now we have found that a group of children may have de novo same features. So that group is now called atypical. And the other group is known as complex clubfoot. And understanding the pathology of how it happens is important for you to recognize it and prevent it. This is a case of mine own where I made a photograph and made a tracing of the cast before cutting it. And then after cutting it, I made a tracing. So the parents had said that unglia gaya ho hai. Fingers disappeared into the soul, into the cast. So disappearing toast is an absolute no-no. Do not accept it. And the moment the parents calls up the counsellors or calls you up, Dr. Sahib, ungliyaan gaib ho gai hai, tell them, dip the patient into a basin full of warm tepid water and get it off. That's why the bump is there. You don't wait for the next day. A slip cast is more dangerous than a no cast. Get it off immediately. Do not wait for the next day. Okay, so why the first cast did not slip? Just look at this. If you put a loose cast, it is likely to slip. If you put a 90 degree, less than 90 degree cast, it is likely to slip. But even if it is 90 degree, not a 90 degree cast, even if it is a loose cast, if the deformity is severe like this, this portion prevents the slippage of the cast. Second cast, the abduction is less prominent. Third or the fourth cast, the foot comes in line with the leg. And at this stage, if you have a loose cast or a less than 90 degree cast, it will slip out like a cylinder. That is why the third or the fourth cast slips. And when it slips, what happens? When it slips, if you see, when it slips, this angle digs into the dorsum venous arch and this heel goes into the cylindrical portion of the cast. And that causes edema on the dorsum of the foot. It squashes the heel and that child had a clear history of slippage of the cast. And it was the fifth cast that slipped. He had come for the sixth cast. And his foot was in line with the leg. That's why it slipped. The deformity is, the abduction, the adduction deformity is slipped. Corrected to neutral, slips out. So, Tell the parents, the counsellors also, 
when the foot comes in line with the leg and it is usually the fourth third or the fifth cast three four five tell the parents if the toes disappear please take it off immediately at home do not wait for the next day do not wait for the next day take it off at home immediately otherwise this is it disappearing toes absolute dangerous sign for developing a complex club foot a loose cast a baloney cast a cast which is a mid thigh cast not acceptable my own patient we got the cast slipped out cut like that this angle digs into this foot and see the edema there after removal see the foot that's a typical complex club foot see the edema there there is digging in there and there's edema there short cocked up grade 2 plantaris crease so i told the parents 3 week cast holiday like i told the parent that there three weeks cast holiday no cast is better than a slip cast the edema settles over a period of time well, what happens if you put a cast somebody asked me sir what will happen if you put a cast again yes you can put a cast again but what will happen with rest the edema subsides rest in the cast the edema subsides when the edema subsides the same cast which is snug fitting now becomes loose it will slip again so that's why you can put 15 cast each one will slip each one will slip so it doesn't work that's number one the second reason why it won't work is the pathology is changed now the pathology is the because of the equinus being severe and slippage of the cast the metatarsals now are in severe equinus the metatarsals being in severe equinus causes the fulcrum of manipulation to be changed from the talonavicular joint to the tarso metatarsal joint to the tarso metatarsal joint so if you were to look at this x ray that's the complex club foot short foot cocked up grade 2 okay versus deep metatarsals are vertical normal foot normal alignment normally horizontally placed metatarsals okay and that's the ct scan showing the fulcrum of deformity is here this needs a modified regime of casting first of all prevent it by snug fitting cast no padding excessive cast not well molded too heavy a cast all those problems which you know can contribute to a slipping of cast we want to avoid that if it is beginning to slip next time put a more than 90 degree cast a 100 degree cast you can do that it works well leave the child without a cast and then you start with this modified regime and here because the fulcrum is changed from the talonavicular joint to the tarso metatarsal joint your finger is on the tarsal bone and index the, the thumb is on the metatarsal head so then you raise the foot like this like that that's it this is under surface on the metatarsal heads and looking at the other side that's the dorsum on the tarsal bones and then you manipulate so when you're doing the cast it is like this that's a video showing the same thing see the shape of the foot changes correctly the length of the foot improves the plantar is crease becomes better the cavus becomes better so modified panseties regime when you're casting it looks like this that is the positioning in a cast you do not do abduction if you do abduction the no correction happens the hind foot bearers doesn't correct you do not do abduction you just do a manipulation in this manner this child after 3 weeks of no cast and then we did modified ponsity 8 months down the line 8 months down the line they fully corrected just three casts and it got corrected and it did not me good dorsiflexion the plantar is crease disappeared in the same child you saw such a deep crease he had it disappeared it's become completely corrected so that's complex club foot once you start ponsetti's method of treatment you will have in your clinic a child coming to you with complex club foot if you fail to recognize it you can keep casting it will never get corrected first important thing is prevent snug fitting cast good molding not too much of padding not too heavy a cast all those details second counsel the parents on slip cast third if it has happened cast holiday and if it is then settled how do i check i check palpate the foot and see is the foot tender these many of these feet are tender so the child should allow a free manipulation of the foot without pain without crying 
the child are always crying okay you saw how i was dealing with those kids they were not crying too much except when we were actually doing the final thing but otherwise they were not crying too much you need to interact with children and get them to work with you so that's what you need to remember and then do the modified ponsettis maneuver and correct it fully is that clear any questions then there are syndromes so you need to know what is a syndromic child so i told you about how to assess a syndrome a head to toe assessment starting from head circumference facial dysmorphism the neck lines the hair lines the abnormalities in the hand all those what is a drome drome is a home aerodrome is a home for aeroplanes okay so a syndrome is a home for multiple signs symptoms and disease conditions so you may have cardiac anomaly along with a foot anomaly along with a you know other congenital birth defects all combined happening in one child under one home is a syndrome but then you are not expected to know that so i did a google search so how do you do a google search for syndromes anyone do a google scholar search or do a pubmed search how do you do it anyone come on you more net savvy than me come on i am in the geriatric club no if you put in google scholar you will get multiple sites you don't know which one to rely you don't know which one to go the most reliable internationally accepted by genetics geneticists is what is known as the omaim website Now what is omaim online mendelian inheritance in man o m i m online mendelian inheritance in man so i put up club foot there i got 275 references 275 references of syndrome club foot can you imagine can i remember all of them not possible so your job is to first identify and recognize them and the top of the line is tarp syndrome that you see so beginning and end i have listed that out not important to look for tarp syndrome is Talib sequinae virus, atrial septal defect, Robin sequence. What is Robin sequence? We have, we have mandibular abnormalities, micrographia, and all those features that go with it. And we have congenital heart disease along with it. Your job is to recognize it, send it to a geneticist for evaluation. There are enough genome sequencing available now. Microarray methods are there. You can identify it, send it. and get the precise genome sequencing to identify the precise syndrome and look for all the features do get if it is syndromic do get an echocardiography done many of them have cardiac defects it's important for you to recognize that once you recognize then you can counsel tell the counsel on the top of the chart should be syndromic club foot then they know the parents know that this is syndromic club foot the results cannot be good in 6 or 8 cast it is not possible so the parents are not worried then so unless you counsel them it doesn't happen you have to tell them it is syndromic club foot okay results are not as good the best results are in idiopathic club foot okay then dr alaric talked about all the conditions that group together as one arthrogryposis and the most common one is a myoplasia failure of development of muscles and a myoplasia can be diagnosed intrauterine by fetal akinesia syndrome fetal akinesial syndrome and fetal akinesial syndrome the fetus will have no movement in utero or very limited movement in utero that's fetal akinesia syndrome you have to recognize that right from intrauterine days and tell the parents they'll come to you with an ultrasound diagraphy and they'll come to you sir iska kya matlab hota hai iska matlab yahi hota hai ki my child might be an arthrogryptic child and there are not just one type of arthrogryposis there are so many types i have just listed eight of them here eight of them here there are so many variations earlier it was thought that the arthrogryptic children do not have any intellectual problems there is one group with intellectual problems also so we need to understand that there is a huge spectrum of arthrogryptic children that present to you the classic one is this distal arthrogryposis multiple problems in the upper limb see the hand see the wrist and this but it can also be inflection inflection with flexion deformity of the knees not a problem you can put a nice cast which won't slip but the same thing happening in a child presenting with extension 
Each cast is likely to slip once this foot is in line with this. This won't slip. This won't slip. Once it comes in line with the leg, it will 100% slip. Then what is described is, you describe a holding tenotomy. You do a first tenotomy and repeat it later on sometime later so that you get the cast from slipping and then correct the foot. Or just before I came, I operated a child. I was operating on the same day I came. Uh, knee release first to improve flexion. Put the knee in flexion. Cast can be then given in flexion. So this is a child where we had to do that. And then you can correct it. So recovatum in an arthrogryptic is a challenge. Most of these children walk, not an issue. They will walk with what is the classically stiff hip, stiff knee, stiff ankle. They may have DDH associated. If it is bilateral, I tend to leave them alone, but many try to correct it also. If it is unilateral, I definitely try to correct it. So that I need to get both the legs symmetrical and get them to walk. And they normally walk stiff knees. It's not a problem in walking. They walk with what is classically described as a penguin gait. They like walk like that. It's a penguin gait, it's a penguin. So if you watch Animal Planet or Discovery Channel or National Geographic, you watch penguins walk, they'll walk moving the whole trunk. They can't move their leg. The whole trunk is like that. It's a penguin gait that they have and they will walk. That's not an issue. But they will be able to walk only if you can get this foot corrected. This child had had several sessions of serial casting with me. Each time it would get correct and then it get back again. This time I tried, it wouldn't get corrected, the tail I had just wouldn't reduce. It just wouldn't reduce. Finally, I had no choice but to do a talectomy, but that's the last resort in these cases. The results of arthrogryposis are not good in literature. This is a paper from Jose Marcoinde. Jose Marcoinde is the one who's taken over and stepped into the shoes of Dr. Ignacio Ponsetti in Iowa University. So he found that his recurrence rate with the arthrogryptic feet were around 25% in two years. I say it is 100%, provided you follow them up a longer period, because there is no muscle. These are all fibrotic bands. They're inelastic. They don't stretch. They will recur. So there, the counseling is different. And lastly, streeter's dysplasia, very common. I tried casting this child. Each time came back with edema. Came back with edema, and I did a Z-plasty. I did it with myself. Z-plasty is a very simple procedure corrected that and then corrected the club foot also. Recovatum, without arthrogryposis, here again I corrected the knee and then corrected this. Arthro, um, spina bifida, same thing with club foot, no issues. Treat the spina bifida part first, follow it up, went to the neurosurgeon, corrected it first. Then we corrected the club foot exactly as Ponsetti's method. They do very well. Only problem is, we had a child today. Dorsiflex was not there. Foot drop was there. Toe drop was sign was there. This child had a toe drop sign. We need an ankle foot orthosis. Foot drop splint will be required. And later on, you may manage with a tendon transfer. If it is available for transfer. So you need to look at these children. Look at their bladder functions carefully. And manage the child as a whole. Dr. Alaric mentioned about diastrophic dysplasia. That's a bad syndromic condition with a severe deformed foot which are short, completely arthritic type with the x-ray picture looking like this and they will have a bad recurrence. So we need to understand syndromic children, complex club foot, different management, complex club foot, the modified management technique. Syndromic children, respect the fact that they will not behave normally. They will reduce the magnitude of deformity and you will have a situation where you will be able to reduce the magnitude of surgery by reducing the severity of deformity, but you may not be able to correct it completely in all cases.